Hi, welcome to Signal Path. This episode is dedicated to free energy and over unity amplifiers and so on. There are hundreds if not thousands of videos on the internet showing these devices that generate energy out of nowhere. And it seems that everybody with a shaky cell phone camera is breaking laws of physics in their garage. So I thought I'll build one of my own and what do you know? I've gotten something. And here is my setup for my free energy or uh, over unity gain machine that I've built. So it consists of a charging circuitry for me to charge my Samsung Note Edge phone. Now as you know all modern smartphones require at least a couple of hundred milliamps at 5 volts to begin charging and this particular phone requires about 500 milliamps. But I'm going to use a charging source which is nothing more than this tiny tiny cell battery at a fraction of a milliamp. So I'm going to multiply that fraction of a milliamp at 3 volts, which is the voltage of the cell battery, into 5 volts at hundreds of milliamps in order to charge uh, my cell phone. All of that for free. This is what the energy companies don't want you to see and so on and on. But of course the, the, uh, the trick to all of this or the magic to all of this is this crystal that I have right here. This was mined um, in the mines of New Guinea by a bunch of explorers and uh, in, from a mine that's kept secret by the old companies and so on and on. And this is the magic. This creates a um, what you call a quantum welling gravity effect that uh, multiplies the current and electrons and allows you to charge your cell phone. So let's go ahead and try it out. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the crystal so we know that the crystal is doing something. And under the crystal, I have my uh, flux inductor um, so that the fields go through the crystal. That's how the, the, the thing actually works. So let's go ahead and uh, plug this in here. Uh, if I can reach that over the camera, there it is. So you can see my charging circuitry right now is consuming 16 microamp. They're measured by the Keithley DMM. And uh, yeah, right now nothing is happening. The phone is turned off. It's not charging. But as soon as I place the crystal over here on top of the inductor very carefully, I have to be very precise here. And ah, look at that. It's working and look, I'm still consuming only 16 microamp and this is going to start charging and you're going to see there it is and this is of course the charging screen for the phone. So there it is, it's working, it's multiplying 16 microamp by you know, a huge factor, there's all this energy coming from the, the quantum gravity thing that I described earlier and it's working brilliantly and I can go ahead once again and actually remove the crystal, I have to be very careful with how we do this and there it is, you can see it doesn't charge anymore. So all of that magic is, is in here and uh, I have a few of these uh, selected crystals that I have brought back and uh, the, the quantities are limited and I have put it in a kit and you can buy the kit for a low value of $39.99 and uh, yeah you can send the checks or money orders or whatever you want and I'll send you a full kit and you can assemble it yourself and be off the grid and separate yourself from the nasty energy companies and all these horrible things. And now you can, uh, with microamps of current, you can easily charge your phone. There we go. Ah, there it is. Works beautifully. Check it out. So yeah, and then one of the advantages of this crystal as opposed to the other crystals you can find is that no matter what the axis is, it will always work. This is a multi-axis dimensional type of crystal. It will never stop charging no matter how you place it. Isn't that great? Look at that. 16 microamps of current and there is nothing else here. Of course, it's all connected together, all the circuit circuitry over there and these components are, are very inexpensive, you can easily put them together and there it is, you can have your charging circuitry, isn't that amazing? So there you have it, did you figure out how it was done? Of course there are many ways a trick like this can be put together and in a lot of cases the, the people who show you these type of videos are obviously uh, tricking you or they're genuinely mistaken in the way they're doing their measurement. Now this is a, a simple measurement, I'm just measuring the current from the cell battery but of course um, if you have seen something like this you would recognize it immediately. This obviously doesn't do anything. Uh, this is just a Himalayan rock salt and the color comes from some trace minerals that's in it. I just use this for cooking. So that's nothing. But what is underneath this coil here is of course a wireless uh, power transfer circuitry. So there is underneath, underneath this piece of cloth there is the equivalent uh, portion of the other side of this wireless charger when it is connected together underneath here. So what I'm doing is I'm using with my other hand I'm using the uh, the virtual bench software and I'm turning the power supply of the virtual bench on like this which turns on the power supply of 
the wireless charger that's underneath here and that couples onto here which then of course charges the phone so the trick comes from the fact that I have that circuit over here connected to the virtual bench going right underneath this and I will pull it out and I will show you from what underneath the, the cloth what that looks like but you've seen me use that before and that's all there is to it so in fact this circuit not only does it not have tens of thousands of percent of efficiency it has much less than a hundred percent of efficiency because the wireless transfer circuitry itself is quite a bit less efficient than that so it is completely the opposite of what I was claiming. Of course, as you would know, I would never um, say something like that. Where that's such an unscientific claim. As well as the fact that I obviously do not want your money. Don't send any money. Um, save it uh, for something far more useful. So let me take this from underneath here and show you that. And then I just want to put some um, concluding remarks in the video and discuss a couple of things that have come across, which I hope that you would enjoy. And here is the other half of the charging circuitry and of course once you bring the two coils together you're able to create some wireless transfer between the two coils and therefore begin to charge the phone. No magic, all science. So what should we think about all of this? Well the reason why I made this video was because I was so frustrated with the amount of misinformation that was available about this topic and not just about the conservation of energy but also about the fact that there is a large number of people especially in the United States who don't accept basic scientific facts like the theory of evolution or the fact that the climate is changing in the second decade of the 21st century this is an intellectual emergency of course it's because people aren't thinking scientifically to think scientifically is a skill that must be learned through education this is why we should put as much resources as we can to provide free education to make sure that people do not make these type of mistakes these these mistakes will cost our future because they affect the way decisions are made and of course there are real problems and there are real conflicts of interest between energy companies and the people who want to find alternative ways of producing and distributing energy but these problems are not going to be solved with non-scientific methods we should do what we've done so far to bring us where we are today science is our most committed effort to understand the real world beyond the limitations of our senses and our human tendencies for prejudice bias and self-delusion. That's why it has accomplished so far. We now know things that our grandparents couldn't even conceive of. And this is why it is so important for us to continue this way. Now, there's something else people say. They say that, oh, science was wrong about this and it was wrong about that. How do we know it's not wrong about the conservation of energy, for example? Well, yes, science has been wrong in the past. But science is a self-correcting mechanism. It finds its own mistakes and it will correct them. That is not a weakness, that's the strength of science. And it is often the case that our most outmost understanding of science are what is subject to change. What are the chances of you waking up in the morning tomorrow and finding out that the earth doesn't revolve around the sun or that water is not two part uh, hydrogen and one part oxygen? The chances are inconceivably small because there is more than a century of evidence backing these claims. So not every piece of scientific truth is, has the same chance of being proven wrong tomorrow when you wake up. So we should take probability also into account and conservation of energy and the theory of evolution and the heliocentric nature of our solar system, all of those fall in the same category. So the whole, the fact that the whole reason why I even do this, why I even have this website is because I believe that creation and dissemination of human knowledge is a fundamental human responsibility. And this is why I continue to do this and I encourage you to do the same if you have the opportunity. And make sure that you always think scientifically, question everything that you come across, including myself, to think for yourself. So, I'll see you next time.